Hey guys, K2's Retro Workshop here. Today, we're gonna to be doing a simple rebuild of this MF355F floppy drive. This is the Macintosh floppy drive out of my Performa 630 CD. It's the uh, small desktop form factor. I'll put a picture or two up on your screen here. Um, this same model of floppy drive is also used in the PowerPC uh, pre-G3 era of Macintosh machines. This guy has a little bit of a problem with uh, taking discs in, it's not smooth on ejecting it, and because it was built without a cover over the front here, we end up with a bunch of dust and everything getting in there, so the head kind of sticks and it just kind of needs opened up and rebuilt. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and show you how it's done. So first things first, what we're going to do is we are going to take the cover off. Uh, getting your fingernails up under the corners and just pulling out. It comes right up. And do it on each side. Um, typically I've been able to do this without having to pop the tabs on each side by just lifting one corner up and pulling it off. But if you see right here, the metal bends down a bit and tends to grab the edge that sticks out here. So you try to pull it up and it binds and yeah, whatever. So we've got that part taken care of. Okay, so there's not a whole lot we can clean with the drive just opened up this far. So we need to take it down at least one step further. Now that's actually not that hard to do. Uh, the first time I figured it out it seemed super complicated, but it's really not that hard to do. Uh, first thing we need to do is we need to remove the ejection motor. So it's got one screw right here in the middle that holds it in place, and then we need to disconnect the cable that attaches it to the uh, motherboard down there. I don't want to tug on it because I don't want to damage it. But yeah, we remove this little motor and then we remove the eject button here at the front because it is our it is the drive's second defense against getting uh, you know flying apart while people are just trying to use the thing. So you just pull the tab up, jiggle it a little bit, pops right out. So with those two removed, this bottom rail will push back far enough that it will release these four tabs that are in this upper rail. But before we do that, what I like to do is take a small piece of like folded up paper towel and shove it between the heads down here. And the reason I do that is because this head is being pushed down by a spring right here. This spring will be more than happy to slam the top head down into the bottom one when we remove this upper piece, because as you can see here, it's being held up strictly by this. So put that there just in case. And then to pull the floppy drive apart a little further, we push the bottom rail back. It releases the top area here. And before we pull it all the way out, we can grab the head and voila. We've got this part off. The next part is just about as easy as that one. You can see how nasty this drive is on the inside. Uh, it's in desperate need of a cleaning here. So for this next part, we need to get this rail to come forward. And you can see here that there's cutouts on, there's cutout here, 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 and here where these pieces will go through. To release this drive mechanism, we need to push it forward just a bit, take this tab right here, this device right here, swing it out, and then let it go back. When you've done that, all of the things line up, and it comes out. There's a spring right here that makes it a little fussy. It goes a little too far on this one side because of that. So if I could get it to go forward a little more, pop up, there we go. And then you 
can take the spring off. Now we can come in here and clean the drive as much as we need to. This particular drive doesn't appear to have any electrolytic caps that need to be replaced, so we're saved from having to do that. But while this is all apart, I mean, we can take this to our sink and clean it with a toothbrush and some soap and water. Same with this section. And then come in here and clean this up. I don't want to really take soap and water to this because it'll involve removing the head and all that, and I don't feel like doing that. So I'm just gonna come in here and try to carefully clean this and then we'll be back. So as you can see, I decided to tear the whole drive down. Um, this gives me a great opportunity to actually clean it. This is the nasty bit we had before. It's super clean now. Uh, able to get it in the soap and water by taking all this stuff off. It's not that difficult to do. Was it necessary? Probably not, but I plan on keeping this computer for quite a while, so I decided to go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna reassemble this back to the point that we were at before, the minimum you need to open it up to clean it, and then we will reassemble it from there. All right, it's time for reassembly. I should go ahead and say that I don't recommend taking this drive down further than this. Uh, clean as much as you can in here. This little mechanism here will come off without a problem, but don't go into removing like the stepper motor and the head and stuff like that. You can end up with alignment issues that are going to cause problems in the future. I didn't think about that till I was reassembling this drive actually. And so this stepper motor here can be tweaked and I'm going to have to see how the drive behaves when I plug it back in. And I should have marked it before I took it off, but it's possible this will need tweaked so that the head actually aligns with the track on the disc. We'll see how that works. Now, when reassembling this and you're lubing stuff up, if you'll notice on here, I've only put little things of grease where it made contact with stuff. The grease is a dust magnet, and on a drive like this that gets air pulled through it a lot, you can wind up with a mess really quick. Uh, they were pretty easy on the grease from the factory too. I just used this Lucas white lithium grease. I want to say I picked that up for like 10 bucks maybe like three years ago and it's an eight ounce bottle and I still have it despite doing stuff like this all the time. So you don't need a big jar of that even if you do get it and you know as you can see here a little pretty much covers it all. And what I do is I just put the grease on where I see wear marks and it's usually good enough. So to reassemble this guy, we're going to do the opposite of what we did to assemble it. I'm leaving the spring off right now so that I can have an easier time putting this together. Maybe it won't fight me. Oh, there we go. And so once that's in there and locked like that, then I can take my spring and attach it here. This should be the one that goes here. I didn't do, yeah, I didn't do a very good job of uh, watching where these springs went. I should have done a better job cataloging that, but here we are. All right, so that is that. That feels like the spring tension we should have there. And uh, for this guy, I didn't actually lube that. For that guy, we are going to <clears throat> put just a little bit of lubrication on the slide rails here. I use a Q-tip for this, and um, it, it slides up and down in these little channels, and you can see them fairly easily with the drive apart. Uh, you might be able to see it here on the camera where I'm going to be putting this white lithium grease and this just makes sure everything moves smoothly like I said earlier I plan on keeping this machine for a while so and to me because I guess we use these in school and stuff you know growing up the usage of the floppy drive on these has a very, you know, nostalgic sound and stuff to it. So, let's go ahead and 
push our rail here back. Kind of hurts to hold that. And you're just lining up these side slides here. Push it down a little bit. Oh, the head needs to go under there too. There's a lot of stuff to pay attention to here. So you be careful not to bend the head springs and stuff too much. Get that down on there like that. Let it go. And that should be that drive mechanism in there. So we have one last spring to install. And it goes from here to here. So we have that guy installed. <clears throat> and we have our eject button and stuff to put in too. Um, we've got our eject motor here. So let's get that bad boy back in. This drive, before I started this, was actually so bad that this eject motor would run and wouldn't do anything. It just jammed. Uh, I even had a hard time getting a disc in it the first time. This drive was a bit of a basket case. But if it works, that'll be nice. So this motor sits in its own little carriage there. It's a little slot. So we pull this out, put our eject button back, and now let's see how a disc works in it. Got my bad disc here, that went in just fine. Ejects okay. Doesn't look like it did a whole lot better than it did before, but the mechanism definitely does feel a lot smoother than it did. So, that is the rebuild of one of these drives. Now let's make sure everything works on it. Okay, so we have our drive set up here. I'm gonna go ahead and put a disc in there. We'll see if it reads and stuff like it's supposed to. Um, this is my Macintosh 630. Uh, I know this disc is good because I use this disc to actually get this machine going and it's telling me that the disc is unreadable so let's see if the eject works eject mechanism and everything is working fine so what I'm gonna have to do is probably tweak this little motor here to get it to read a disc um, I'm not sure exactly which way to go about tweaking that but let's see if we can get that figured out okay so what I'm going to do here is, I, I was looking at pictures and stuff like that, I don't recall this part of the ribbon cable flaring out as much as it does, so I think this motor may need to be tweaked to the um, counterclockwise direction a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just loosen these screws up a little bit, and then, should I be doing this with the computer on? Probably not. Tweak the motor just a little bit to the right, or to the left, counterclockwise and then tighten it back up and then we'll see if the motor is lined up where it should be in order to read a disc. Um, you know, hopefully it's that easy. Looks like it's trying. Yep, it opened up our uh, disc tools here. Let's see if it'll run. Not be open because a disk error occurred, huh? Let's see if we can copy it to our hard drive. 
Okay, so it's still getting a disc error. So I'm gonna eject the disc, tweak the motor a little bit more, and uh, see if I can get it to read without a problem. All right, sweet. After a little bit more tweaking, I uh, was able to get this guy to work. So we can put our disc in there. Reads just fine. And I can go and copy off of the disc. And it just does its thing. So we now have a rebuilt working floppy drive. that we can put back in the machine forever. So yeah, hindsight's 2020, uh, obviously. Uh, make sure you mark your stepper motors. I put some Vibratite on there so it doesn't move around or anything anymore. Uh, make sure that your, you've marked precision hardware like a stepper motor before you start removing stuff. And yeah, as long as you pay attention to what you're doing, uh, this is a really simple rebuild. If it wasn't for the fact that I was trying to record this stuff for you guys, I probably could have had this drive completely disassembled, rebuilt, and put back together in half an hour, if that. So it, it's really quick. A couple of things. Make sure you're testing the drive with just some... I mean, this is an IBM formatted disk that I just formatted to Mac, even. Uh, make sure you're not using your good irreplaceable disk tools discs or something like that. Uh, I have tons of spare floppies around here. But bad drives have also given me plenty of these floppies around here. So these are good to keep around for testing the mechanisms and stuff too. You don't want to get dust and garbage in there while you're playing with these. Um, little note, my videos are going to be a little shorter like this, maybe a little more on the fly because I just started uh, five classes for school again, and I work full-time, so videos are going to be a little less uh, rehearsed than they have been getting to, and I've been trying for to make better content for you guys. But uh, I've got a couple little things like this to do, so I'll be trying to keep content flowing. It just isn't going to be, you know, a crazy 16 meg video mod in a voodoo motherboard or something like that. But, yeah, have a safe fall, and I'll see you again soon.